what if we're, we're focused on on today and not worried about tomorrow we can actually accomplish what god has for us today but so many times our life gets filled up with the things we're thinking about for tomorrow that we, we miss today i'm very guilty of that myself <coughs> Of many, many times the things I could have accomplished for God today, I did because I was worried about getting ready for tomorrow. And I don't even have a promise of tomorrow. My eyes have not opened yet for tomorrow. But my eyes were opened for today. My little grandson, four, four, almost five-year-old Bentley, he just, he's just got this thing about him. God is great. He just works it out for no reason. <coughs> Wherever he's at, somebody say something, God is great. Or his other one is, you got to be patient with God. <laughs> now when you're doing something and you're getting frustrated and old Billy pops off and says you got to be patient with God you're like <laughs> okay I get it my perspective just changed that quickly it can and so it's, it's not that we're so set in our ways that we can make the adjustment because the, the scripture tells us be transformed by the renewing of your mind by realizing that your perspective might be a little bit off. That maybe it's time for me to, you know, if, if your life has been exactly the same for a long time and you've been dealing with the same thing over and over and over, you haven't changed viewpoints. You need to move to a different viewpoint. You need to look at it from a different angle. What is God trying to show me in this so I can move on to the next one? Because evidently I'm missing something. So I can move on. Because life is, is a journey. Life is a process. And we don't know all the viewpoints until we get to the end. Yeah, it might look real good at number four, but if you don't go to number five, you're never going to see what it's like. If you don't move on in your life and let the things that have happened happen and go on to the next day and see, well, I, haven't, I don't remember ever really hitting up and asking the Lord, what can I do today? Well, starve. Because he'll show you. He'll help you. He'll give you something to do if you really, in your heart, or seeking him and wanting to do something for him. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 6 and 8. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. I woke up this morning. I had clothes to put on. I got here. There was a donut in there. I should be as content as I need to be. Yes. Amen? The Bible says be content. Because now that I'm content, I'm not focused on trying to figure something out. I've got everything I need. So what does God want me to do? I'm wide open for suggestions. Because my perspective is on what God would have me to do. He's provided all that I need this morning. So every the rest of the day has got to be for Him. He's already taken care of me before 8 o'clock. James chapter 1. A few pages over. Sixteen and eighteen. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow or turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we should be of kind of first fruits of his creatures. He built us, he put us together, he put us down here, he gave us life that we could go and be the first fruits, that we could go and deliver his message, that we could go and, and be who he called us to be. See, there's a calling. They say, well, you, you missed your call. There's a calling on every life. Every life that is a life of God is, is a calling, there's a purpose for it. There's somebody that you're going to meet somewhere, even if it's just one person in your life, there's a purpose for your life to lead somebody to a life of Christ. That's why you were created. That's the purpose that you were put here. Because only through Christ is our life <laughs> made complete. Only through, through Christ does our perspective become to one that we can really truly follow and, and, and know that I may not understand where it's going, but I know it's taking me where I'm supposed to be. I know by trusting Him and following Him and, and doing as He calls me to do, I will reach the point that He established for me before the foundation of the world. I will achieve that if my perspective 
stays open. I don't get locked into something. I don't get so dead set in my ways that I don't move on. That I don't travel on to the next viewpoint. You know, I'm sure along the Grand Canyon, some of those viewpoints might be close together. And then there might be one that's a long ways away. I don't know, I've never been to the Grand Canyon. Born and raised in Arizona, lived here most of my life, but I've never been there, so. Maybe someday we'll go. But see, God has a purpose and a plan. And He did the day that He sent Jesus to be crucified for your sins, that you would have life so that you could spread the gospel of His Son. That was His purpose. That's His plan. He wants to make your life full. He wants, He came that you would have life and have it more abundantly. Let's go over and look at a couple of examples here. There's, there's a song that we sing. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And just a little talk with Jesus, just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. The word whole. Let's look at that. Go to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew 9, I'm going to read verse 22. But this, this is about the woman with the issue of blood 12 years in her life. She had an issue with blood. It, it was a disease, and she had dealt with it, dealt with it. And, and she seen Jesus, and she, she had such faith. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And see, she was, she was seeking healing from her earthly ailment. But her perspective was right. There's only one that can take care of this. There's only one that can heal me. But see, he did more than that. And we're going to look at that. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 22. Now after she had touched him, he felt the Spirit move out of him. And he said, Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Now listen to what he says right here. Thy faith has made thee whole. Trusting and believing who Jesus was and what he could do, and that her life would be complete. She trusted that her life would be complete. Her perspective was, was right on mark. If she could just touch the hem of his garment, he healed her. But he says, Your faith has made you whole. Let's go to another story in Luke 17. Story, it's not a story, it's a real life event. Luke 17, 11 through 19. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem. We're talking about Jesus. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, he passed in the midst of Samaria at Galilee. And as he entered into this certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now Jesus, these guys are calling out, ten of them. Jesus had mercy on us. Their perspective was that Jesus could heal them. <coughs> Jesus had mercy on us. He said, okay, you guys go see the priests. Well, as they left to go see the priest, their leprosy cleared up. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the other nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger? Now listen to what Jesus told the one guy. And he said unto him, Arise and go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Ten were cleansed. But only one was made whole. His perspective was right on. Jesus can complete my life. Jesus can fill my life. Jesus can make me whole. And he's the only one that can Amen. He can do a lot of other things, but he can make me whole if I have faith in him. 
my faith, my trusting, my knowing that if I follow him and go to all 16 viewpoints and follow him to each one and wherever he takes me I can go and I will find rest and I will find peace and I will find all the blessings of God if I stay my perspective on him and that he can make my life whole. He can. My perspective cannot be dead set on any one thing that I don't move. You know, as sharing with some people what a wonderful time we've had here for the last six and a half years. I remember when we had three-hour service on Saturday. I remember when we had, when we started the 8.30 service and we thought we would just do it for a while and then we would stop it and for six and a half, for six years, we have done the 8.30 service and the 10 o'clock service. Well, we had it. We had the 8.30 service, 9.45, life, uh, the Richmond skip. We had the, the 11 o'clock service. We had the 6 o'clock service. We had Wednesday night service. We had the three-hour Saturday service. We, we just went all the time. And God just was in the middle of it, and he blessed it. We had a wonderful time. And now God is changing things, and I'm asking God why. It was good. It was really good the way it's been for six and a half years. Why would we want to change it? time to move to the next viewpoint, Dennis. It's time to watch what else I can do. You just, you just seen one little perspective. It's time to move to the next. It's time to let God do the work that God does. See, Randy and Cheryl and, and Gary and Mary. There's others. It's not just me. He wants to use everybody. He wants, he wants His glory to be revealed through everybody that has faith and trusts Him. It wants to serve him. And so he puts us in a place that we can. We came here just to do the worship for, for Jim on Sunday morning. And then he would allow us to use the building on Sunday night. Not even knowing what that was going to be. Six and a half years later. It's been tremendous. It's been unbelievable. But there's more. There's more. There's a whole lot more. But we have to not be just locked into one thing. Yeah, this was great. But what's at the next stop? He wants to do the same thing in your life. Don't just get hung up in one place and one thing and, and say, well, this is great. I want to stay right here. My mother, um, we built a house for my mom in the 70s. She'd, we'd owned, she'd owned a couple houses, but her and my dad, but um, it was just my mom and, and she, she we, my brother and I and my stepdad, we, we built a house for my mom. The way she wanted, the house that she wanted, the way she wanted it built. And she would, would never leave. She wouldn't, I, I, and I tried, after all the kids were grown, she had foreign exchange students and everything and she'd used the house and she'd been there a long time she lived there uh, almost 30 years in that one house and I tried and I tried and I tried as she got older <coughs> in her years mom this place is too much it's five acres there's a shop there's this big house about 1800 square feet you can't you can't take care of it anymore it's too much for you to try to manage and take care of it's time to it's time oh no I'm never gonna leave this house and she did and I always wanted now my mom loved to travel when she retired she went to Norway she went to Australia she went to Alaska she went to Hawaii she took a grandkid and went all the time and I've often wondered would you what would have happened if you did just let go and let God We can't get so focused in on one thing that we're not willing to move when God tells us to move. It might be real nice and it might be real comfortable and this might be the greatest thing that ever happened in your life. Life is good. I don't want to move. <laughs> Got to move on. Got to be willing to go when God says go. Got to be willing to say, okay, I, I can sense it in my spirit. There's something that, some place the Lord wants me to go with. 
I'm so good right here. I just really don't. I really don't want to. That's your choice. God gives you that choice. But life goes on without you if you don't go with it. Time is going to come when Jesus is going to return. And there's going to be a day that we're all going to get called up to heaven to have faith in Jesus Christ that our life has been made whole through him. And the, the, only, the only thing that our focus should be on is that when that day comes, I hear these words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That should be the goal of every person that's ever believed in Jesus Christ for just a moment. That on that day, when we reach that, that time, because guess what? None of this other stuff is going to matter because when we read, I brought nothing to this world, and this is true, I'm not going to take nothing out. The little bumper sticker that says, a man with the most toys wins? Not true. <laughs> Our perspective must be fixed on Jesus. Amen. Our perspective must be fixed on His purpose for my life. That I can enjoy the life that He gave me to the utmost, knowing full well that He died on the cross and He shed His blood and He told us in His Word this morning in the book of John, whosoever eateth of this bread, eateth of this bread and drinketh of this blood shall have life. If you don't, there's no life in you is exactly what Jesus says. If you don't, there is no life in you. If you don't have your perspective fixed on Jesus, you're just, just existing. It's not life the way Jesus intended you to have life. So guess what? Life is good. All the time. Because my life is hidden in Christ. So my life is good. It doesn't matter what's happening. Doesn't matter if the tire goes flat. Doesn't matter if the line's too long at the grocery store. It doesn't matter about anything else. My perspective is not going to change from life is good. It'll get bumpy. It'll get crazy. I don't know why some things happen, but life is good. Amen. 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 All right, we got a couple of songs we're going to close with. If y'all would come on up. See, now your perspective is different because now the next time you're around somebody and they go, life is good, you're going to go, oh, wait. I heard a sermon about that one time. Yeah, you're right. Life is good. Amen? Nice. Perfect. Thank you. 